first week of negligence surrounds duty of care and breach of that duty. The first case that really established the duty of care requirement and showed a clear division between tort and contract was Donoghue versus Stevenson. This case involved a non-contractual party who was injured by a snail dissolved in a bottle. The case established the neighbourhood principle, which said that a duty of care was owed to anyone that may be reasonably foreseen to be harmed by the defendant's actions. To establish what would be reasonable, two possible and broadly overlapping tests were devised. Lord Atkin formulated the inspection test, where the person best placed to inspect the goods should be liable, whereas Lord Macmillan favoured the control test, which made the producer liable up until they ceased to have control over the item. Over time, new tests for when a duty of care could be held to arise were developed. For example, in Anne's, Lord Wilberforce developed a two-stage test based on proximity and policy. This was later overruled by Caparo, where Lord Bridge established a three-part test based on broadly the same principles. The more recent case of Robinson, though, said that law should be developed incrementally and Caparo should only be used in novel cases. The NV Pool added our proviso on when a government body should be held liable by stating that public authorities do not owe a duty of care simply by virtue of having a statutory power. Now moving on to the second part of the negligence inquiry, breach of duty of care. There are two stages to be examined to determine if there has been a breach. First, what was the reasonable standard of care that should have been exhibited in this scenario and second, did the defendant fail to exhibit that standard? For the second stage, three factors are taken into account as established by Bolton. Likelihood of harm, which precautions were reasonable for the defendant to take, and whether the defendant provides a socially useful service. An important later case was the Wagon Mound 2, which showed that only the type of harm need to be foreseen, not the extent of it. This could be seen as an extension of the thin skull rule, which says you must take your victim as you find them, even if they are more seriously harmed than could be reasonably foreseen. A case which demonstrates this is Paris v Stepney. A man with one sighted eye was blinded when a piece of metal went in his working eye. Although this injury would have been less serious for a fully sighted person, the court ruled that the employers failed to take reasonable care by providing goggles given the increased seriousness of the injury. Other rules developed for breach are that a learner driver is expected to reach the same level of competence as a qualified driver and that professionals must abide by acceptable practices for a responsible part of their professional body.